unto the Church of God and Saints of Christ, to the bishops, to all the pulpit dignitaries. We have had a time tonight. Yeah. I am truly filled up. My heart is filled with joy. All right. I echo the same sentiments as my sister. This is the first Passover that we have shared with our family, and I am just so grateful to see you today. So 
said my daughter. Yeah. It was her, and she walked in. That's amazing. Yeah. My daughter said, go back to the desk and uh, they said, you should, my oldest daughter said, you should go back in there and say something. <laughs> I said, I, I pulled the car up for the car, went back in there. She was in the fish market. I said, hey. She said, hey, Pastor. I said, I thought I saw you. Of course, it wasn't you, and then you walked in. She said, I'm glad you said something to me. Oh, yeah. My son is suffering with cancer. I need you to pray for him. Yeah. Come on, Andrew. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, God. 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 She just texted me a couple of days ago. Pastor. My son went through chemo and beat cancer. Thank you. Thank you. So I showed the bishop. Just in the morning service, I showed the bishop. Yeah. So this is the girl I was talking about on Zoom a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. We're sitting here tonight. It's real. I'm on my phone. This woman is black. I said, Bishop, something's going on. Mm -hmm. Just when my phone pops up, my friend Lois Brown, she's live right now. I said, something's happening. Mm -hmm. Church, I want you to know that yes. God is a very present. Some people don't believe in this stuff we talk about. Some people think it's crazy. Some people don't understand the power of God. Tonight, I just want to jump into this message, but I had to share that because I can't explain it. I don't understand it. But all I can encourage the church is to keep trusting God. Follow the Spirit of God. If you get weary, trust God. If you don't understand, trust God. If you think that the way He's leading you doesn't make sense, Trust God. Trust God. First Corinthians 1.18. For the preaching of the gospel to them that perish is foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. One more time. I hope you're listening. I know it's late. A little chilly here. When I get chilly, I get sleepy. <laughs> but if you could just bear with me for a couple of moments, okay. the beginning of this is important. Right. For the preaching of the cross to them that are perishing is foolishness. Uh -huh. But unto us which are saved is the power of God. Yeah. The power of a foolish story. Yeah. The power yeah. of a foolish story. <laughs> The Bible records that we walk by faith and not by sight. <clears throat> and what that really means is that we do not live based on reality or what we can prove. Church, church. in other words, it don't make sense. But the Christian still believes. Yeah. We choose to believe. And aren't there people like that? There, there are some people that find themselves in love with another person that don't love them back. But they believe yeah. that they still love. Even when it's over, they still believe, they still spend their money, they still buy gifts for somebody that don't love them back. We choose to believe. Even though it don't make sense, we base our belief system on hope. Hope that is not seen. Faith isn't always about believing in things that make sense, but understanding that there will be times in life when it's necessary to believe in things that don't make sense at all. You, you, you know as well as I know that even scientists can't prove everything. And there, are, there are, are, are many things that scientists believe that they don't understand. Yes, sir. The placebo effect. It, 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 it's, a, it's a study that they do when people are in pain. They inject them with morphine, and they inject them with pain, and they inject them with morphine, and they, and they inject some more pain, and they give them saline yeah. to see if the morphine was really working, and somehow they don't feel pain wow. from the saline. They can't explain it. Yeah. 
There are other things they can't explain. They can't explain Alzheimer's disease. Wow. Amen. The doctors and scientists, they cannot explain how a baby can live in water for nine months and afterwards can never live in water again. They cannot explain these things. Scientists often use concepts from philosophy of science that, that make some semantic distinction between law, theories, hypotheses, and such. And to them, all this makes sense. Yes. I, it makes sense to them. But, but, but life is not based on this principle. If I only believe what I can prove, life is based on we walk by faith. See, the saints of Christ live by faith. They, they live by hope. And hope is something that is not seen. Otherwise, it's not hope. So this is why the saints walk by faith and not by sight. We are, we are not like that with Thomas unless I put my hand on his side and my finger in his hand, I won't believe. We believe. The foolish person says to walk in unfamiliar territory is, is silly. But we walk by faith. Yes, man. Yes, man. Not by what we see. Yeah, yeah. We don't need to see it before we believe it. But the power of foolishness is demonstrated in this. A magician shows you a ball in one hand. Then he puts his hand behind the back saying, now which hand is it? And it's a needle hand. And we don't believe it, but we believe it. We don't believe in magic, but we believe that the ball is gone. But to those who are not religious, and to those who now believe in this metaphysical theology, what I'm talking about is probably going to offend you tonight. Because it doesn't make sense. I'm confessing that now. Today, Good Friday, doesn't make sense. The day he died, the world called it Good Friday, but, but even that's a contradiction. What is good about the day that killed my Lord and my Savior? Sounds foolish. A hundred percent God and a hundred percent man, but, but the people killed him because he was too nice. It, it doesn't make sense. Especially when, when I tell you that the human part of him died, but the full essence of him, God, he did not die because God did not ever be. It doesn't make sense. The past few days we've shouted and we've sung songs. And had a great time because Christ the Lord died. Yes, sir. Yeah. God, the second person of God here. God in the flesh. The one who was God and thought it not proper to be equal with the Father, but became flesh to die for the sins of the world. Yes, he was beaten. He was crucified. He was hung on the cross. Yeah. And he died. It doesn't make sense yes, that we celebrate the dying. Oh, and even more, we embrace it. The thing that he died on the cross as a symbol of our salvation. Are you with me? Are you with me? The cross, our Lord and our Savior tortured and nailed to a stake, and we embrace this as a symbol of our salvation. Come on. All right. The cross. Yes, sir. Not, not the crown, a symbol of his kingship, not the star of David, a symbol of his throne. Not a rock, a symbol of the stone of truth. Now a sword, a symbol of power, the cross. It's not a symbol of victory, but a symbol of defeat. And even worse, a symbol of shame. To be hung on a tree in that time was degrading and disgraceful. But Paul says that the preaching of the cross, the description of this brutal and shameful death of the man yeah, yeah, yeah. who after becomes our savior is crazy. Yes, sir. It's foolish to those that are perishing. Right. Then to have rose from the dead and now is the catalyst by which God has forgiven us of our sins. To some, it's a foolish story. Right. 
In other words, it's not sensible exercise for us to engage in. It's the very reason they've taken prayer out of school. Because it doesn't make sense. It's the very reason why colleges and universities don't want to talk about it. All they want to do is pick it apart. It's not the conversation that would appease the intellect. I know today that, that it would make sense to your, those of y'all who are very intelligent. <laughs> Unless there is some scientific fact that can be proven. Yes, it's foolishness. To those that don't believe. Yeah. So, so Paul takes the affirmative argument and wants us to, to understand that he isn't crazy. He, he makes it very clear that the Bible we read doesn't make sense to the laws. To the ones that don't believe, it's, it's a hard set. But, but, but what Paul wants us to see here in the text, Paul makes this comparison of the believer versus the non-believer. Paul says that there's a distinction between those that are flourishing and those that are perishing. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, somebody say flourish. Flourish. Somebody say perish. Paul says if you are a believer, you are flourish. But to those that find this gospel story to be foolishness, Paul says you are perish. A lot of people who, who make the decision not to serve God based off their reasoning and their fact finding and their scientific they're very smart, but they're perishing. Uh, does this don't make sense to the intellect? And you may have everything that you want. You may have money. You may have cars. You may have houses. You may have degrees and a sector, but you're perishing. Oh, God, have mercy. <laughs> have you ever seen the beginning of America? Yes, sir. Last year, around uh, 40,000 races lined up in mass to run the London Marathon. The organizers told the runners ahead of time that it probably is going to take somewhere around 15 minutes for you just to cross the starting line because there were so many people. Now imagine how, how, how long uh, it must have taken the Israelites to leave Egypt. Scholars agree. Scholars agree that the crowd leaving Egypt, Bishop Vincent, was over 2 million people. How do you move two million people out of one place at one time? It's a foolish story. And those who didn't believe Moses perish. If you ate the lamb this week without taking the communion, you're perish. If you don't know Christ as your Passover, then you're perish. Everything you have and everything you are and everything you're doing is dissolving and fading and ultimately will be worthless because you are perishing. But to those of us that believe, that walk by faith, that can't see it but just know it, that is real. We're flourishing. Yeah. Now that doesn't, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean that we're rich. That doesn't mean we have everything we want. That doesn't mean that we're better than anybody else. That doesn't mean that we're special or we have special secrets. Believing doesn't mean that you're better off. It doesn't mean that you won't experience trouble. It doesn't mean that you won't suffer loss. It just means that you're flourishing. I'm broke. Paul says that we are troubled 
on every side. Yet not distressed. And uh, we are perplexed, but not in despair. We're flourishing, church. <laughs> When, when, when looking at the text, I noticed this about Paul's observation. He, he says of the Jew and of the Greek, Paul, Paul doesn't define their positions as opposites. Kevin. All right. Although we clearly see that he's talking about the believer and the unbeliever, St. Terry. Right. The believer and the unbeliever. But Paul, as I observed this text, he says, the preaching of the cross to those that are perishing is foolishness. He should have said, but to us, it's wisdom. That would have been the opposite. But he says, Paul says to us, the preaching of the cross is power. Somebody say power. The problem that we have is when we don't believe, we don't have power. But Paul says to those of us that believe, it is power. Thank you, Jesus. Because Paul knows that we're not saved by wisdom. We're not saved by philosophy. We're not saved by psychology. We're not saved by membership. We're not saved by grandma. We're not saved by big mama. We're not saved by daddy or granddaddy. We're saved by the those that graduated from the schools in the higher academia, that that can be saved. Anybody can be saved. Paul says in comparison to those who consider this foolishness, the ones being saved find power. God's power. Saving power. Healing power. Luke 24, 49 says, And behold, I will send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endowed If I walk back a little bit, oh, right. but in the whole gospel story, we find this foolishness. You ever think about it? Everything we know about the gospel we preach to some is ridiculous. Think about it. God sends a group of people to Egypt to survive a famine. Then those same group of people, by the way, those were his chosen people, they go into slavery. 430 years. It's a ridiculous story. Then, you ever think about it? Then God tells us that the president of that Egypt, as God tells him to let the people go, will not let the people go. He agrees to let them go. Then God hardens his heart so he cannot let them go. It's a ridiculous story. The children of Israel are free. And God tells the group, kill a lamb, put the blood on the doorposts, and when I, the Lord, see the blood, I'll pass over you. I'll give you free. Why did God tell him to put the blood on the doorposts? Is it that the angel had to see blood in order to know the houses that he should pass over? Did God not have enough intelligence to know who his chosen people were? Lord, have mercy. Because uh, God says so. So you going to tell me that this spirit, he, he, he had to walk through the door in order to save these people? Yeah. Let, let me deal with this for a moment. The entering into the house represented the captivity of Israel because they were in Egypt land as slaves. Yeah. But the house that they were in represented, and that door represented the door that they were stepping out of when the death angel came through, they were stepping into their salvation. If they stay in the house, they remain in captivity. But when they stepped out of the door, through the blood, they were stepping into their salvation. I know it's a ridiculous story. 
but it's a saving story. Yeah. Uh, it gets worse. Jesus said, I am the door. If any man thinks about me, he shall be saved. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. They had to put blood on the doorpost. Today we put the blood on our arms. So when God freed them from bondage, they ran to the Red Sea, and God caused an east wind to come and part the Red Sea so they could march through on dry land. When they start getting to the other side, God closes the water and drowns their enemy. Two million people leaving your place. And Pharaoh and his host didn't catch them. It's a victory story. But it gets worse. Lord, have mercy. Then God drowns Pharaoh and his host. And the Bible tells us that all the children of Israel were on the other side saying, The Lord is my strength and song. And he has become my salvation. It's a ridiculous and foolish story, but it gets worse. God gave up his heavenly seat, came down through 42 generations through the lineage of David, but he was older than David. But it gets worse. They said that this Jesus we serve was born through a virgin that had never been touched by a man. Matter of fact, she got pregnant through the Holy Ghost. The schools of academia and the, those that are educated say this is ridiculous. You ever thought about it? This, this story of ours, they say is ridiculous. But it gets worse. We say that the baby grew up to 12 years old and was confounding the priests and the rabbis in the temple at 12 years old and had never been to school. It's a ridiculous story. The church, it gets worse. Lord have mercy. First of all, Paul, I stand on the shoulders just in case you didn't know of what Paul said in Romans, the first chapter. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to those that believe. We say one day that he spit on the ground, picked up a handful of dirt, and rubbed it in the man's eyes that was blind, and he began to see. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, but it's powerful. Oh, Said one day he turned wine. He turned water into wine. Yeah. That's power. Wow. Jesus said he, he carried his own cross to his own death place because of the power of the gospel story. We believe they put a crown of thorns on his head, but it was power because we believe. They beat him and they kicked him. I want to tell you, every time they touched him, they were transferring their sins to him because he bore the sins of the world. That is the power of the gospel story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He died to set the captive free. That's power. He died to forgive us of our sins. That is the power so that we might have a right to the tree of life. It's a crazy story. But it's a saving story. The power Tonight, I say it's a saving story. It's the power of the cross given to those that believe. And if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Ridiculous story, but to us who believe, it's a saving story. 